Welcome to Beyond Overeating by Wholesome Lifestyle Project, the overeating podcast, where I'll be showing up weekly to share with you what I've learned during my binge eating recovery, helpful tools such as yoga, mindfulness, and energy medicine. My name is Stell, and my purpose is to inform and ed- educate so that you can fast track your recovery in healing your relationship with food and finally trust yourself around the peanut butter jar. Join me as I share top tips, my struggles and triumphs to help inspire or just entertain. Remember, there's nothing wrong with you if you can't stop overeating. That's why I'm here to guide you along the way. Welcome back to the Beyond Overeating podcast by Wholesome Lifestyle Project. My name is Stelkum Heath, binge and emotional eating recovery specialist, and I'm super excited to be back here talking about how to heal your relationship with food. And today we'll be talking about the famous food zombie squad. Who are the food zombies, you might ask? Well, in this episode, I am excited to share that with you. It is quite a comical way um, for me to explain certain terms, but also make it a little bit more relatable. So hopefully you'll enjoy um, the um, characters that I've put through the food zombies. They are actually quite funny. And it's just um, so beautifully Uh, put together. Um, But if you are new to the podcast and you were wondering why you're struggling to stop overeating in the first place, make sure to listen to episode um, three, actually, where I outline um, why a binge is caused in the first place. And the binge is caused by an urge. And without the urge, there is no binge. And in episode five, I share um, how to deal with the triggers and what triggers an urge in the first place. So make sure to go and listen to those episodes. But I'm just going to do a quick recap uh, based on episode three, uh, just because um, there I went into quite a bit of detail, but um, it kind of uh, forms the basis of today's uh, discussion. So the part of our brain responsible for an urge is the hypothalamus. And this part of the brain is sometimes called the lizard brain, animal brain, or our lower brain. My clients and I have lovingly started referring to this brain as a food zombie. I always felt like I was possessed during a binge. Having like almost an out-of-body experience while tearing into a box of pastries like a zombie. You You can almost see me there with like like dead, like, you know, completely um, in a dead stare, arms out, and just not being able to stop. It was just such an out of control feeling. Some of my clients have said that they feel possessed or, and they've um, used certain terms for it. Um, Some have said um, devils, some have have called it um, just like demons, you know, it has just been such a, like a weird way of, for them to experience this. And, you know, if you feeling like you are going through that, where you kind of feel like your brain or your logical mind switches off and, um, you just can't stop eating. And it's almost like you watching from the outside. That is what I actually call, um, food zombie mode, (laughs) But from working with and speaking to hundreds of women, including my clients, the food zombie always shows up in five very particular ways. And I have um, done many hours of research and I've decided to name these food zombies a couple of years ago. And uh, I'd love to share those with you and just see um, step back and see which ones, re- um, you know, resonate with you. Sometimes you can be more than one and sometimes you can be just one. Um, so, um, so just see how you go with this, have fun with it. And uh, I'll get started into who the food zombies are. So here they are in no particular order. Anxious Annie Annie is the first food zombie. And if you um, go into my um, show notes, I will have some pictures um, of Anxious Annie and all the the other food zombies. So make sure to go and check 
um, check them out if you wanted to kind of just put a little kind of an image to uh, the actual um, to the actual zombies. So Anxious Annie is a stress eater. She is really good when it comes to food, but then she kind of face plants into a bag of sweets or chips when things get tough. Uh, her go-to stress foods are sweets, and then she follows this with feelings of failure. She feels she cannot trust herself around food, and like she's slowly going down a slippery slope. So Anxious Annie is someone that I deal with on a regular basis with um, my clients. Um, it's just, you know, life can go extremely well until those stress moments hit. And until that happens, you know, it's almost like, you know, nothing else matters and um, the eating just comes out of nowhere. Late night Lizzie is our next food zombie. And Lizzie does well during the day. She's one of those uh, girls that kind of like, you know, keeps on track during the day. She follows her exercise routine. But from any time from about three to four in the afternoon or when she gets home, she finds herself in uncontrollable binge cycles. She often been, uh, hides her packaging and wrapping because she is so strict with herself during the day. And then she's so embarrassed about what she's done in the evenings. Um, and she just cannot live with the shame. So she thinks that there is something fundamentally wrong with her. And she fears that she'll never be able to stop. Now, this is something that I struggled with a lot. Late Night Lizzie was one of the things that really bugged me for many years, especially when my husband was out of town. Uh, he traveled a lot for work and um, I would often feel like the first two days of him being away, I would be fine. And then all of a sudden I would fall off the wagon and you know, find myself like in a food coma a couple of days later. <laughs> So um, just know that late night Lizzie is quite a common, common trait for a lot of people. And um, I have specific techniques to work with late night Lizzie. Um, and yeah, it's, it is just such a, um, you know, a, quite a frustrating place to be in when you are quite disciplined and you feel like you're doing everything right. But then in the evenings, you just kind of lose, you know, lose all in inhibitions. Our next zombie is called Possessed Patsy. Now, Possessed Patsy cannot stop thinking about food. Now, if you have ever been on a, any form of restrictive diet or any form of um, diet where you are hardly any, eating any calories, um, you would have possibly have had food thoughts. Now, Possessed Patsy struggles with overbearing food thoughts. That's all she can think about. She wake, wakes up hoping that she will not overeat. Then she thinks about food while she's brushing her teeth. She gets the kids, kids ready for school and, um, and at work while sitting at her desk, she starts fantasizing about pastries. She feels like she just can't stop thinking about food. It's taking up so much mental space. She feels like she would be so much more productive if she didn't have these continuous food thoughts that come through. And I have been um, through Possessed Patsy for many years as well, especially while I was um, overrunning and abusing exercise. Um, I would often sit at my desk and um, all of a sudden in my mind, I could literally almost like those cartoon um, practices see this uh, like pastries almost floating in front of my face it sounds silly but um, this is just the extent of how our minds start playing with us when we have restricted in such a, a like a bad way so possessed patsy um, really feels like she could write a book or she could have taken on a new course or she could have done, just done so much more with her time if she didn't have all these food thoughts. Um, and she, you know, the food thoughts are either about, um, you know, everything she craves or it's about how to make up for what she has eaten. So both of those um, types of food thoughts can flood your mind and they can be quite frustrating. 
Next, we have Wagon Wanda. And I think everyone who's ever been on a diet has probably experienced Wagon Wanda somewhere along the line on that diet, or maybe the second time around trying that diet or the next diet or, you know, whatever the case. Wagon Wanda is really good with starting a diet or starting on Monday, starting on the 1st of January. And then she goes shopping for all her foods, all the healthy stuff that she's going to be eating on her eating plan. But she also goes and buys herself the massive, the most biggest end of days kind of binge day foods. That last day before diet to her is just that ticket to eat everything because she feels like she's not going to be able to eat those foods ever again. However, as we know, with following restrictive diets or any forms of um, diet regimens um, that are, you know, quite restrictive, um, this will like, you know, starting on that healthy eating plan will last for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, if you're lucky, you eat one little small little piece of cake, or, you know, a piece of chocolate, and the next minute you are face planting into just the grocery store, um, Oreo sleeves, um, cookies, cakes, you name it. So Wagon Wanda um, does not believe um, doing things in half measure. She's a perfectionist. And that's why she has this kind of a black and white mentality that I normally refer to. She's either on a diet or she's off a diet. And when she's on a diet, she's good. But the minute there's that cheap meal, everything just go flies off the handle and she's like, yep, yeah, well, I'll start again on Monday or I'll start again next month or I'll start again on the 1st of January. <laughs> so um, I'm not judging here. This was me for many years. And, um, you know, you can leave a comment in the show notes if this has never happened to you. Um, but yeah, Wagon Wanda is something that I think everyone can relate to. Next, we have Counting Cassie, and Counting Cassie is something that um, I kind of experienced later through my um, eating disorder journey. I tried to be a lot more restrictive with what I ate because I thought that do doing that would actually help um, ease off the binge episodes it would help ease off my cravings um, and so I became counting Cassie and counting Cassie has this unhealthy obsession with eating healthy all the time and often this can even go further into an actual disorder which I experienced which is called orthorexia uh, but there are other counting Cassies out there that are just completely um, just um, wanting to be healthy all the time. They feel that they actually judge others for what they eat, but they judge themselves um, so much. All their foods must be toxic free, dairy free, gluten free, low cal calorie or clean as we know it. So Counting Cassie finds it very difficult to eat in restaurants because she needs to call ahead and she panics um, whenever friends invite her to dinner. Uh, you know, she might even tell or call up her friends and say, I can't eat this. Please make sure that you have these arrangements. So she's obsessed with uh, defining and maintaining the perfect diet and she'll fixate on eating foods that give her um, just those feelings of being pure and healthy. And unfortunately, when we are so regimental when it comes to food, that leaves us feeling um, very much deprived. And also, um, if we are eating so clean, usually our calorie intake is quite um, minimal. And that can actually start leading to a lot of sugary cravings. Obviously, sugary cravings um, come from the fact that if you deprive yourself too much, there is always a chance that you are fantasizing about the foods that you deprived yourself of. I always say you don't fantasize about your, um, you know, the boiled chicken and the salad lettuce leaves. You fantasize about the things that you have banned out of your eating regimen. So, um, counting Cassie feels a lot of guilt when she does actually eventually eat something that's not out of her plan and then often possessed Patsy takes over uh, for her because she has these continuous thoughts about getting back to that clean eating space so 
those are the food zombies. I have one more, but I thought I would just tell you a little bit about how these food zombies affected me. I did share a little bit. Um, but late night Lizzie would show up for me um, late at night or um, and especially when I was lonely, when my husband was traveling, whenever I felt isolated in any kind of way, late night Lizzie was my best friend. Um, counting Cassie um, would come out, obviously, when I was trying to make up for my binges. Um, I was counting Cassie probably from um, from late 20, um, 2017 all the way up until my recovery. Anxious Annie um, was something that I never admitted to. I always just thought that, you know, I just had like food issues. But when I look back, a lot of my binge eating did come from um, anxiety and from, from stress. Um, so, and Wagon Wonder, <laughs> as I said before, I think Wagon Wonder has showed up for, uh, for most of us in our lives. Um, and Wagon Wonder showed up for me because of my perfectionist mindset. The, I needed to be perfect on this diet. And the minute I messed it up, I needed to start again. And therefore, I would take a day off and that day would turn into a week. And then I'm back, back on track on Monday or, you know, wh whatever the case is. So being um, possessed, as I call it, by e either one of these kind of feelings or the way our thoughts work that really made me feel helpless and ashamed and out of control and I really wanted to be more like recovery Roxy and recovery Roxy is my final uh, food zombie and she's on the other side um, she's where I am now and where I take my clients um, because there is recovery from all of this and it might seem like you are struggling and you're just so stuck but you know um i've realized that there, there is hope for all of us and we just need a specific way of getting through what we are going through and um yeah so once we at that point we can be like recovery roxy and recovery roxy understands her cravings without having to eat she knows how to nourish herself when she's feeling emotional and she's able to mindfully indulge uh, and like have the odd piece of cake or chocolate and food doesn't have a hold on her she doesn't feel like um, she's controlled by food and she feels like she can trust herself around food. And Recovery Roxy is also binge free for a couple of weeks or a couple of months um, and a couple of years like me. So just know that recovery is possible for you. And it's not just for any, for some people. Recovery is for everyone. Um, and you just need the right guidance on how to address your urges and then you can do this too. You can be in a space where you are recovery Roxy like myself and my clients. So, you know, if you are feeling like you are ready to be a little bit committed to something and to um, take on something that will just help you move forward and get control back around food, then I'd highly suggest you join my Food Zombie Challenge. There are still a couple of spaces left. Um, come and join us. And um, this will really just um, give you that kickstart into, um, you know, getting that relationship with food right. So um, the challenge starts on Monday, the 18th of January. And um, I will put the link to join in the show notes. But before I go, I would love to know and I'd love for you to come over into the show notes and comment on which food zombie you identify with the most. Is it late night Lizzie? Is it counting Cassie? Is it possessed Patsy? Is it anxious Annie? wagon wander or do you feel like you've got this um, food issues under control and you are recovery roxy come and let me know in the show notes 
And if you would love to just like and subscribe wherever you're listening, give me a rating so that more people can find this podcast. I will be extremely grateful to you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful um, day or night, wherever you are. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me today and don't forget to share this with all your friends. You can do this by adding this to your Instagram story and tagging me at Wholesome Lifestyle Project or by simply telling them about it. If you could rate and review on whatever platform you are listening, this will go a long way in helping me get this podcast out there so that I can share my message and help as many women out there struggling with food issues as I can. Don't forget, you can follow me on Instagram on Wholesome Lifestyle Project or connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Estelle Heath, and that's where you'll find me on LinkedIn. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.